crashing Willie's Garage. Ha! Welcome to Willie's Garage, the ALF dissection show. I am Nick. I'm a huge ALF fan, have been since I was a very young child. And George, joining me in this journey, had, hadn't seen an episode of ALF until we started this a month ago. It's been a month now, George. No one can believe this is happening. <laughs> So one month in, it's still surreal. <laughs> when it gets to be normal, that's when we'll know something's wrong. Um, but uh, I want to uh, thank everybody for writing in. Uh, you can always write me at nick at foundfootagefest.com. I still haven't gotten my Willie's Garage email <laughs> address yet, but it's coming. Um, so yeah, thanks for all the feedback. And uh, Joe Blevins, who occasionally will remix stuff for our VCR party show, decided to take a stab at remixing the theme for ALF, he calls this one, ALF Had a Good Day, and I wanted to start off with this. Just waking up in the morning, gotta thank God. I don't know, but today seems kind of odd. No barking from the dog, no smoke. And mama cooked the breakfast with no hug. I got my girl bone, but didn't dig out. So Finally got a call from a girl when I dig out. Hooked it up for later as I hit the door. Thinking, will I live another 24? I gotta go, cause I got me a drop top. And if I hit the switch, I can make the ass drop. Had to stop at a red light. Looking in my mirror, not a jacker in sight. And everything is all right. I got a beat from Kim, and she can do it all night. Called up the homies and I'm asking y'all, which part are y'all playing basketball? Get me on the court and I'm troubled. Hi, Last yeah. week, messed around and got a triple double. Picking brothers every way like MJ. I can't believe today was a good day. Had to slow down the intro, but it worked. Absolutely. So I would invite you to, if you have the ability to remix things, take a stab at the Elf theme. Um, see what you can do. I think there could be some great possibilities with that. And again, it's Nick at FoundFootageFest.com. Well, uh, I think we've been taking turns at spotlighting members of the family, the main cast of Elf, as well as spotlighting various bit players in the show. Uh, what do we have this week, George? Well, we have. Uh... Let's see. We have Oregon native Ann Sheedin or Shedeen. I think it's the latter based yeah, on Shedeen, the spelling. Yeah. Um, she had been in 26 TV shows and 12 movies before she became Kate Tanner on ALF, which became her signature role. And she's had some roles since then. Um, she described the process as, uh, quote, a technical nightmare, extremely slow, <laughs> hot, and tedious if you had a scene with Alf, it took centuries. A 30-minute show took 20 to 25 hours to shoot. And it was, quote, astonishing that word never got out what a mess our set really was. And yet, she must have come to terms with it, because if you look at her photo on the Wikipedia page, here is her today oh, with Alf. She posed um, with an Alf doll. Yes, and she... Uh, she She's a gorgeous woman. She really is. Yes, and she collects uh, Statue of Liberty replicas. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I hope she's having a great life. I, you know, yeah, I, I think it is interesting that nowadays, if there was trouble on a set or the cast was miserable, everybody would hear about it. There would be right. posts about it. Nothing is secret anymore. But in the 80s, you could have, you know, Jerry Stahl doing heroin in the, in the bathroom. <laughs> she talks about in Permanent Midnight and having nightmares about Alf scratching at the door trying to get him. And that just didn't get out until a book was written about it years later. But, uh, yeah, I now every, now everything's like it's everything's there's no secrets in show business anymore. Where do you hear about the secrets of Willie's Garage that are going to uh, get out? Oh yeah. Yep, I'm going to put out a tell all book and so is George. Yep. Let's get into this episode. This is uh, I've been looking forward to talking about this episode because there's guest stars and uh it takes a political stance which is I think appropriate for this time of year and he talks to the president. So uh, let's get into it with a Melmac recap. <laughs> Still funny. It's weird being in your dream. <laughs> Melmac recap. Melmac recap. Melmac. This episode is called Pennsylvania 65000. All the, the uh, titles of episodes are based on song titles. 
And you know what? I think I knew the movie Transylvania 6 5000 before I knew the song that that was based on. And that was the case for this episode, too, I think. Right. It was like a big band Glenn Miller kind of song. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of that. the 40s, I think. Yeah. Like Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy type, you know, Pennsylvania 6 5000. And it's a stretch, I guess, because it's a phone number. And this episode is all about Alf is on the phone. We saw in the intro that um, Lynn, the teenage daughter, is in the in the closet talking, I assume, to her boyfriend on the phone. And teenagers, they're always on the phone. Right, George? Right. And her boyfriend is named Lash. Apparently, he was mentioned in episode one. I didn't notice. Oh, I didn't um, either. But, I just noticed it in this one. Right. But apparently, uh, so he um, is like Vera on Cheers, one of those characters who is mentioned frequently, mm-hmm. but never seen. Never and see. I, Based on Lash, you imagine that she, even though she's a very straight-laced kid, that, that um, Lash is some sort of <laughs> hellion. Oh, I would have loved to see him. He would have been an 80s punk rocker with a mohawk. And Willie like, would uh, just what was would have his been... Name? Like who? Like Nick on uh, Family Ties. Yeah, exactly. And it would have been, um, can I call you Lash? You know, it would have been, yeah. Willie would have been <laughs> exasperated at Lash. You know, Lash, can I take your safety pin out of your nose and put it in this dish? You know, it would have been a lot of that. Um, yeah. But yeah, we never see Lash. But we do find out that Alf is addicted to calling, uh, I, I guess, political call-in shows. Yeah. Um, and Larry uh, King. Yeah, so here's basically kind of a stand-in for that type of a show, um, and Alf on the phone with his political beliefs. Okay, we're back. We're ready to open the phone lines. Today's topic, nuclear arms limitations. I guess Under Secretary Simon Dryden and Sammy Davis Jr. Hi, you're on the air. <laughs> Hello, Larry. Alf. Yes, Alf. We haven't heard from you in a day or two now. How are you? Fine, Larry. How's the... Brian doesn't know what to do in the scene. <laughs> Poor Benji Gregory. He's like, I, I'm not involved in this at all. Alf. Just kind of fidgeting. Yes, Alf. We haven't heard from you in a uh, day or two now. How are you? Fine, Lair. How's the sore knee? Coming along. Sammy. Shalom. So, what's up? Well, I've got the solution. Did not get that Sammy Davis Jr. being Jewish joke as a kid at all. To this nuclear bomb thing. Great. Let's hear it. Get rid of them. They're dangerous. Okay, uh, Mr. Dryden, would you like to respond? Uh, well, I I think what you've done, Mr. Alf, is oversimplify the problem somewhat. Here it comes, Brian. Better go get the shovel. (laughs) (laughs) And, uh, so, yeah, Alf. And the voice is probably familiar to many people. It was for me because it sounded like so many characters from The Simpsons. And that's right, it's Harry Shearer doing his radio character that he did on... SNL and everywhere else and uh, he is so funny he just elevated that you can see why he went into voiceover stuff later in his career yeah I, to me I was drawn to the copy of Omni magazine on the the, uh, the coffee table I noticed that too yeah oh. and, and and Willie obviously is interested in science even though his profession is a social worker I think right. that's what he does but he's like he has a telescope in his garage he has a shortwave radio and he's reading Omni and we've got uh, nuclear well, war as a plot point. Yeah, nuclear war is a plot point. Yeah. And, and I think people even just a couple years younger than us don't remember what it was like to have your day-to-day life permeated by the terror of being vaporized by uh, nuclear bombs and how it was also on TV all the time. It was in cartoons. It was on TV shows. Like they never, Nobody shied away from it because it was everywhere. Oh, Red Dawn, the movie, scared the hell out of me. And uh, yeah. it seemed very real, very realistic. And... Uh, yeah, so, and nuclear war was uh, maybe not a bold stance to be anti-nukes at the time, but uh, <laughs> maybe it was. I don't know. It was, you know, the Reagan era. Yeah. And uh, and by the way, Harry Shearer does another voice later in the show, and, uh, well, I don't want to give it away. Hmm. So he calls in, and apparently, um, yeah, Lynn wants her own phone line because Alf's taking up the phone. That's sort of the B-plot. But then um, Alf is using the shortwave radio to actually contact the president about this. And he gets a hold of uh, Air Force One, where we see an, uh, more character actors interacting with Alf. Oh, God. Yes, sir. What have you got on the ALF? Well, so far, we've got the American Laundry Federation and the Association of Lawn Fertilizer. <laughs> Shall we round them up? That is Les Nessman, 
uh, the guy, Richard Sanders from uh, WKRP, if anybody's familiar with that show. I don't remember that show very well, but the thing I remember about it is Les Nessman. He had a cubicle, but he pretended it was his office. So he would make people pretend to open the door and knock on the <laughs> invisible door. And I, as a kid, I thought that was really funny. So here he is in just a bit part on Alf, having been the like comedic standout of WKRP. <laughs> Tracing's complete, sir. Okay, so Alf cannot get a hold of uh, President Reagan because he's in the toilet at the time. He's indisposed. And uh, they, they think he's calling in a nuclear threat, even though he's talking about, you know, don't, you know, the bombs are getting out of control. And they, you know, they say, is that a threat? And he's like, well, yeah, nu nuclear weapons are a threat to all of us. And they're like, okay, that's all we need. We need to escalate this. Um, right. And it turns out a couple of FBI agents come and apprehend Willie because they trace the address. And uh, one of those FBI agents is played by none other than Meshach Taylor, who is pictured here, who may look familiar to you. I knew him first, I believe, from the movie Mannequin. Right. He played Hollywood. Yes, that was an unforgettable character. Um, and Designing I... Women, which my family, I don't know why, that I was not in the demographic, but I loved Designing Women as well. Never watched an episode, but in case you, uh, in case you don't remember, this was... Uh, Hollywood, a, 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 what was it? A decorator of department store windows. Yes. Right. A, just a classic 80s character. Um, I, when I first moved to New York, I, my two neighbors who I became friends with, um, one of them, uh, Jeff, they're a, a gay couple. And Jeff was actually a, a window decorator at Macy's. And I, for some reason, I, I just couldn't think of anything but Hollywood, even though he was not at all like Hollywood from the movie. But, um, I guess it was a stereotype for a reason. I have no idea, but Meshach Taylor, he was really good. What's he up to now? Do you know? He is deceased. He, oh, he, okay. he passed away of, uh, about five years ago, I think, from cancer. I All right. That's too bad. He was in a lot of 80s movies. He's very memorable to anybody who watched 80s yeah. TV or movies. So uh, they arrest Willie and, because they think he's done it, and uh, they, they think he's the nuclear threat. Willie gets arrested. Um, and in the meantime, Alf actually gets through to President Reagan. And uh, this scene is going to knock you dead. Here's uh, Alf talking to President Reagan. Not in person. He's, he's reached him on Air Force One over the radio. Hello. Listen, I know you're a busy guy, so I'll make this brief. Willie Tanner's in jail, and I think it's my fault. Oh, really? Yeah, he's innocent. He didn't call you, I did. Goodness, this, this sounds pretty complicated. Yeah, but it shouldn't have been. You see, all I wanted to do was talk to you about your bombs. Oh, now look, you're not going to bring up the Bonzo films again. I was under contract. I had no choice. <laughs> no, 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 not those bombs. The nuclear ones. We've only got one planet. So why don't you and the Rusky ease up a little, will ya? <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm sure we'll do everything we can again brian not much to do in that he's just <laughs> kind of in the background watching elf do things so i get why he was relieved i think he said uh, in the last episode that he was relieved that he when the show ended mm -hmm. um but uh harry shearer doing a great reagan and elevating a, a pretty uh i don't know a little bit of a hacky joke about bombs being his his chimp movies the bonzo movies which again as a kid i did not get but um yeah, there were a lot of TV shows that seemed to feature Ronald Reagan because he was he was sort of a caricature even before he became president. Um, yeah, know, and, and this was so this was eighty six, and I looked up the date, and this was two years after his landslide reelection. Um, so it's a second term. He was his approval ratings were in the sixties, and he he was seen here as like doddering and harmless. But within a few months, the Iran Contra scandal blew up, yes. and his ratings collapsed, and he. Then he, people started to view him more as either doddering and easily manipulated or secretly evil pretending to be doddering. Um, yeah. And so this is and, sweet spot. Or, or if you're looking through rose-colored glasses as a modern conservative, he was God. Yeah, right, um, right. <laughs> yeah. But, but um, yeah, so it was interesting, too, because, like, it is, you know, of course, it came out that he actually was, had, you know, all-timer, Alzheimer's, and, but um it, jokes about his memory were happening even in 86. Yeah. So he was, yeah, he was doddering. He got, would, 
like the uh, Secret Service agent had to say, you know, dial two on the phone. That's the one in between one and three, you know, kind of had that kind of talking like to him like he's a baby. And he actually played it up himself in the second, in, in his debate with Walter Mondale, where he said, uh, what was the line? Um, I, I don't want to bring up age. I won't talk about my opponent's youth and inexperience, even though Mondale was like in his 60s <laughs> right. at the time. I mean, I will say this for Reagan. He had a decent sense of humor. Um, uh, but yeah, and and then it, what happens in the episode then is they put Brian in front of the shortwave radio. The FBI comes in, and they realize he's just a kid. They can't arrest him. It would look bad. And they, I think they give him the Medal of Freedom for promoting world peace. At the end. <laughs> so, little laying it on a little thick. But yeah. um, some takeaways. Of course, we found out uh, Lash is mentioned again, and uh, yeah, jokes about Reagan's forgetfulness and. Uh, so Alf can apparently do anything. He can get the president on the radio. Right. I remember saying that the last episode is where I felt like it's turned into a cartoon. But when they had the montage at the end, I think it was like stills of them, of photographs of of the Medal of Freedom and stuff. That yes. was when it became full full cartoon for me. Yeah. Yeah. Or like the end of Animal House, like what happens, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. It was pretty broad. I guess they got to do anything because you're working with a puppet. So, uh, right. and maybe, I think maybe that's what I liked about it as a kid is like, you know, they, they could be as wacky as they wanted wanted to be. Um, all right, that's uh, the Melmac recap. Let's get into some Alf crap, everybody. This is the segment of the show where we talk about all the various weird Alf merchandise that was uh, put out in the 80s and beyond. And with me here is... Uh, my pride and joy. This is a birthday gift from George last year. It is an ALF kid's tent that fits an adult, clearly. It fits an adult. This is set up on my bed right now. And how has that affected uh, anybody else in your life? Well, um, New York apartments are fairly small, and this is fairly huge. So I have to – initially, I set it up in the living room and then thought I could transport it in my bedroom, and it was too big. So yeah. I had to actually uh, set it up in here with, with some part of it pre-made. But uh, I always wanted one of these tents as a kid, um, and uh, now I have one. So it's, uh, it's pretty great. Thank you, George. Life goal is achieved. Now yeah, what? It is achieved. I don't know. There's nothing else. It's all downhill from here. All right. What do you have for Alf crap this, this week? Well, I've been trying to get, like, really out there things. So I thought I'd look for some of the more uh, – things that people might have remembered the lower end products like um like for instance i had th this sort of setup of party supplies for batman toys or for just like batman character so i think you had some of these don't didn't you yeah i have the tablecloth which i use uh at my annual birthday party pre-pandemic uh birthday parties i would use the tablecloth and i have the uh invitations as well okay I have and the they... cups though the cups are pretty cool these seem to, they seem to have other versions of these, like oh. this is, uh, I guess that, is that, is that the cartoon version? Of no, it doesn't look like the one from, I mean, it's obviously a cartoon, but it doesn't look like the one from um, Alf Animated Adventures. Mm. So anyhow, so there's, maybe in the future you could have several different types of parties or more tables. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. Um, I, were those eBay things? Yes, I believe so. Okay. Or Etsy, maybe both. Yeah. Well, uh, last week we talked about um, an ALF cake. You showed off an ALF cake pan. I actually found one of these in Alaska and decided it was actually a year ago, a year and a month ago, on the 33rd anniversary of ALF's premiere, I decided to finally break it out and make an ALF cake. I made it a, a Funfetti cake. So you can see the Funfetti there, and it's in the ALF-shaped mold. And then I... Uh, frosted it so i i'm vegan so i had to make vegan versions of all this and uh that's really good but for some reason it reminds me of jerry orbach <laughs> <laughs> i don't know why it does but i guess i could see that and obviously i didn't do the the that's a piece of plastic that comes with the cake pan uh, that you put on the frosting right um but it was delicious i ate it mm. over the course of uh, a few nights shared it with friends there's the, I added him saying grow up <laughs> and, uh, but I refuse to cake Alf. I refuse to. Um, so that's another, uh, that's piece of Alf. Crap. Yeah. Is, um, 
uh, I've, I'm afraid I'm going with something again more uh, that you get at the store. Uh, Ooh. This is the Alf Watch, which has his famous quote. What time is it? <laughs> the answer, no problem. Right, which it actually says on the on the Ooh. watch. And it's, oh it, man, it looks like it looks like the L. Uh, this is an L, like an early LCD mm -hmm. when it was two tone. It looks like it's sort of like leaking. Yeah. Um, oh, that's look where it's made. Nelsonic. That's in Long Island City, which is where I live. Actually. Well, you Queens. should stop by. They may have a few boxes left over. Oh, I should actually. We can do a remote episode. Where <laughs> man on the street i just knock down and knock on their door and we'll leave until they leave, give me one of those um the last thing i want to show is we are still in the midst of the alf costume contest now i don't want anybody to have to spend money on a costume you can if you want to but the idea is to make an alf crossover so the example i gave a couple weeks ago was alf machio so i photoshopped the karate kid outfit onto alf alf machio it, this is obviously trying to tie in with Halloween this month. Um, but what do you want to do? Uh, and you can even try to recreate photos of elf costumes because I, I collect those. And this photo I feel like should be in the Smithsonian. I have a Google alert set up for elf costume and nothing comes up very often, but this came up last year and man, what a day. Ooh. This is a child in an elf costume playing outrun in an arcade so i'm drawn to the sh the sneaker for one <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's one of my favorite parts yep uh, um and splash wave is the song that has been selected oh yeah, on, yeah you, on could, outrun. you could collect what through the steering wheel you could select which song you wanted to do yeah. and uh that child selected Spl <laughs> splash <laughs> wave. that's so, a great, great yeah get this costume somewhere and or make your own and uh, recreate this make your own little outrun uh the uh October 27th at noon Eastern time is the deadline. Send your elf costumes, photoshops, or drawings. You can even draw it uh, to Nick at foundfootagefest.com. We got a big prize package for you. Now, does it have to be celebrity crossovers or could you do like an Alf Landon featuring uh, the 1936 presidential candidate Alf Landon? Uh, I'll allow it, George. Okay. And thank you for asking. I will allow it. Okay. Whew. Uh, so, and if you have any elf crap, um, send it to uh, the address on the screen or email me at nakedfoundfootagefest.com uh, and, uh, and let us know what you've found. The goal again is to collect every piece of elf merchandise uh, that's ever been made. I think yeah. uh, it's doable. So I've been showing t elf tattoos and here is the one that I've been saving for a few weeks. This is uh, Alf is eating. I don't know what that is. It looks like a panini. I don't know. Uh, with but there is, as you can see, I thought that was a tiny Batman, but that is a cat saying yes. meow. I saw a living cat. I didn't know that. That um, it almost that. looks like a pita. That you yeah. Might okay. Find. Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> all right. So, so leaning into the Alf likes cats tattoo. Yeah. So I don't wow. know, just wanted to show that. So that guy will be buried with that. Okay. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> Hopefully I'll be buried in this. So who am I to talk? <laughs> uh, if you've found Elf stuff, send it in at the address below or email me at nick at foundfootagefest.com. And uh, an additional um, prompt for you. We always like to get interaction. So this time we're talking about um, anti-nukes. Elf was very anti-nuclear weapons. If you were to make an 80s anti-nuke slogan from Elf's point of view, what would it be? A quick, punchy, slogan that would get people to be anti-nukes in Alf's voice. Send that in. We'll read the that. top 50 that come in. Yeah, we'll read the top 50. Uh, after that, I'm afraid you're out of luck. But do this before next Wednesday, because next week we have a uh, star-studded episode. Well, no, it's not star-studded, but it, it's about <laughs> something interesting. Alf becomes a distributor, a distributor for a Mary Kay-like cosmetics company called Terry Faith. Ooh. And yeah, this this is an episode I remembered watching as a kid, so I'm excited to rewatch it next week. Wow, a plot studded episode. <laughs> it's a plot studded episode. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah. Uh, so thanks everybody for tuning in to another episode of uh, Willie's Garage. We've been doing this for a month, George. How are you holding up? It's been a month. It's been a month. <laughs> uh, all right, we'll see you next week, everybody. Come crashing with his garage.